Hey guys, Cronus Falls here, and today I am going to be bringing you a champion guide on Sepulcher Sentinel. Now, Sepulcher Sentinel is an amazing champion, and one that I pulled recently during the two times ancient events and built her up quickly in order to get this video out for you guys because she is outstanding. So let's go ahead and get into her skills real quick. Now, what makes her great is on her A1 here. She attacks one enemy and has a 60% chance when booked of placing a 50% decreased attack debuff for two turns. Now she is one of the few champions in the game who has a consistent decreased attack of 50% on her A1, which automatically makes her good off the bat, puts her in league with Jareg, Tayrel, Paidma, those kind of champions who you really need to bring into your clan boss team in order to make it work. Let's go ahead and move on to her next ability though which is on a 4 turn cooldown, places a 60% increased defense buff and a block debuffs buff on all allies for 2 turns. So this is a very good ability and would be amazing on a 3 turn cooldown, but still very useful on a 4 turn cooldown because nowadays we have stuff like a 4-3 speed tune, which can allow her to take 4 turns to the opponent's 3 while the rest of your team stays in sync for counter attack. So this allows you to use your block debuffs in order to block the stun 100% uh, of the time, which is very nice and uh, allows you to just stay in rotation easier. Then she has a really cool and unique passive here, uh, Untouched by Death on a one turn cooldown has a 25% chance or 50% chance when booked of completely blocking incoming damage when an ally is attacked, occurs once per turn. So this is pretty cool, uh, for instance on the stun round, when the stun hit comes in, you could have a 50% chance to take no damage from that. Also on every AoE, uh, that one of your champions has a 50% chance to not take damage, so that's usually going to come off on someone. So a pretty interesting and unique passive, no one else in the game has anything like this. She also has a great aura, increased ally defense in all battles by 25%, which is basically the exact same as Tayrell's. So just all around really good kit, but let's go ahead and get into our build now. So this time I'm going to go ahead and start with the masteries that I've chosen. And so since she is a clan boss build, we are going to be coming straight down into War Master as per the usual. But in support you actually have a couple options here. Now keep in mind this is for a speed setup, not a counter attack setup. So I do have turn meter boosting masteries here. Keep that in mind, you do not want those if you are doing a speed tuned setup. But uh, let's look it over here. So I have accuracy, accuracy, turn meter boost from debuffs, uh, evil eye for other content besides clan boss, and then master hexer to go ahead and extend that uh, decrease attack when I get it up. And then on this side I've got rapid response to increase my turn meter when buffs fall off, uh, lower of steel to increase my speed. And then here is, uh, I mean this kind of area is where there's a little bit that you can change up. So potentially instead of Sniper, which I've gone with, uh, which increases the chance of placing any debuff from skills or artifacts by 5%, uh, I chose that because I want the decreased attack to land more often. But you could also potentially, instead of Lore of Steel, take uh, either Cycle of Magic or Merciful Aid. If you're doing counterattack, I'd take Merciful Aid instead so Cycle of Magic doesn't mess you up. But uh, And come into Lasting Gifts here. So it has a 30% chance to extend the duration of any buff cast by this champion by one turn. Since she puts two buffs on each champion, that's a pretty good ability. But for my setup, I really just wanted her to get that decrease attack on consistently, so this is what I've ended up going with here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the build now. So I do not have her in lifesteal because in my build I have Masha Led and Masha Led allows me to get off that lifesteal on his own. So uh, I do have one lifesteal piece but obviously not a set. So as you can see here I have her in two set speed and one broken set. So on the weapon here uh, we have 10% crit and uh, 6 speed 13 accuracy so pretty decent weapon for her. On the helmet, we have 14 speed, 9% crit damage, and 9 accuracy. On the shield, we have 35% uh, defense, which is very good. Allows me to get her into crit rate gloves, which we'll see in a second. As well as 7% crit damage, 7% crit rate. And then 50% crit rate gloves with 10 speed, 7% HP, and 31 accuracy, as well as 7% defense, which is good. 
Uh, sorry if you can hear my dog messing around right next to me. Uh, and then I have her in this defense percent chest plate here. It's a six star with 14% HP, 11 accuracy, and seven speed. So pretty good chest piece there and worth the broken set here between these two pieces. And then I've got speed boots. They're giving me 45 speed, 21 accuracy, 14% HP, and 19% crit damage. Then we come into the jewelry here. On the ring, I have defense ring, five star, with 16% defense and 16% HP, so pretty good. On the amulet, defense again with 21 accuracy and 7% crit damage. And finally, I have her in, if it will come up here, an accuracy banner with 14 speed and 8% HP, so not bad. So overall, pretty good build. Let's take a look at the total stats here. We've got her running at about 34k HP. 4,070 defense, 222 speed, 87% crit rate. That could climb up a little bit if I got her into 6-star crit rate gloves instead of 5-star. We'd be almost at 100%. 110% crit damage and 244 accuracy. So pretty good overall. Now let's go ahead and take her into some content. So as far as dungeons go, uh, she'll be good in all of the keeps. She'll be good in Minotaurs. Um, I don't think you need her in Minotaurs. She's not one of your fastest champions, but she's fine there. But I think the three dungeons she can really come into and make a difference are Ice Golem, Dragon, and Spider's Den. I don't see her having really much use at all in the Fire Knight, so we're not going to be bringing her in there today. Let's go ahead and jump into Ice Golem to start with. So let's come in here, and uh, I've run this team already. I'm going to go ahead and take out Reliquary Tender and throw in someone else to do some more damage for us. So we're going to bring in Armiger. We're also going to get Sepulchre in as our lead here because she has a higher defense aura, which is nice, uh, than our Apothecary. So this should work out for us here. We have four cha or three champions based on defense with a defense aura. We're going to get some block debuffs from her. We're going to get some revives from Syl, our 180-day login champion. And then our decreased defense from Stag and speed ups from Apothecary. So let's go ahead and get into it here. We are going to come in. And we will see right away she gets this up for us. Sorry, I tried to take it off auto there. But uh, we get our block debuffs and our increased defense. So this increased defense is going to allow Armiger and our Sill to do more damage, as well as herself. And then she is red affinity, which means she will be the target for the waves. Now Sill's going to be our CC here, so we'll go ahead and let her go, get some stuns off for us. We only get two that time, which is unfortunate. But you can see we're already doing a lot of damage on these guys. Armiger came in with a big hit because of that increased defense. And we should be able to mow through them pretty good. 32k hit from Armiger there. So we will be moving through these guys at a pretty decent pace. Um, I did go ahead and stop it at the beginning there. So we're not going to see the actual time that this can do. But it should be pretty decent overall. This could slow us down here once she gets that on. So we'll have to beat her down slowly. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. We're getting through these pretty good. We're not getting stuns off of these guys either, which is good. So we'll be coming through this first wave. It looks like right around a minute and uh, 10 seconds, I guess. And then on to the next, we'll see a more accurate representation of what a wave time looks like with this team. So come in here. They're going to get their shrieks off unless we get stuns. We do not. Sill's really not doing her stuns here as much as I would hope. I don't have the uh, Fearsome Presence Mastery on her in this build, so uh, that could potentially be why she's not getting as many stuns off as otherwise, but uh, still not too bad. So we're getting through here. See, Sepulchre blocked one of those hits, so he took zero damage. Unfortunately, it was a two-hit move, so he ended up dying anyways. But we do have Sill in here for revive, so we can keep it rolling with the Armiger. Interestingly enough, they are targeting Armiger, probably because his HP is just so much lower than Sepulchre's. But we'll see here now that he's back up to full, if they start targeting her, if they even get another chance to move, that is. So we're coming through here pretty good. It looks like we're going to be finishing off this wave probably right around the 2 minutes and 20 second mark, maybe slightly longer. And, uh... Getting through the second wave on Ice Golem is really the biggest challenge as far as keeping everybody alive, so we've gone ahead and done that. Now, at the boss fight itself, Sepulchre actually does have a lot of utility because with her uh, block debuffs here, 
if these guys get a chance to do stuff, uh, he won't be able to place his uh, heal decrease, he won't be able to place his decrease defense, and the boss, when he does his big slams, won't be able to place his freezes if that's up. So pretty good. Armager's gone in there and blocked the revive on that guy, so we're not going to be seeing him again, which is definitely going to speed up our run here. Uh, if he gets back around before he dies, we might be able to block him as well. Let's see. Stag, don't kill him. Aw. All right, well, he's going to be coming back around, but uh, the other guy will not. So let's see here if we can see some zeros pop up from damage uh, over the next couple rounds, and then I'll probably go ahead and cut it. Got Sill stunning him up here, so this is going to be a pretty easy run. Uh, between Sill and Armager, these guys just aren't going to get a chance to do much. Let's see. I want to see one more hit to see if we can see a zero pop up on the damage with that 50% chance. Here we go. Here comes a hit from him, probably. Oh, no. Harmager said, no, no, no. You don't get to hit. All right, but we should see a slam coming in here in the next few seconds. She hits pretty decently hard, too. I mean, 26k on a bad affinity is not bad at all. Come on, where's that slam coming from, Ice Golem? Let's see it. Interestingly enough, he's just not procking his slams at all. There we go. And no zeros. All right. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and cut it here and come back in at the end, and uh, we will see how it goes. All right, so we're coming up right on the end here of this fight, and it's going to be about five minutes, which is probably more like four and a half if we account for the starting lag that we did. But uh, pretty good. Pretty good overall. Very consistent. Not worried about going down at all. That's a pretty good piece. We'll go ahead and keep that. But let's move along now to the dragon. So we're going to come in here. And we are going to go stage 20. So this is the team I'm going to be bringing in. It's very similar to the last one that I showed. Basically, Sepulcher as our lead. We've got our uh, Sill as our CC. We've got the, our Apothecary coming in for speed. Tayrell for decreased defense. And Frozen Banshee is going to be doing the poisons on the dragon to go ahead and finish him off. But uh, Block Debuffs is actually very good on this dungeon if it's on at the right time because the Tayrells come in and do a decreased defense on you that can really mess your people up. They take a ton of damage. So uh, we definitely don't want to be seeing that. Let's see here. Uh, we did take the hit, so we didn't proc that 50% chance. I was hoping we would and we'd be able to see it. But alas, uh, there will be plenty more chances coming up here. Let's see. Man, still just really not getting these stuns off. There we go. There was a zero off of that Horden hit, so that's going to help keep us alive. And it's once per her turn, so if you've got her moving faster than the opponent, she's basically always going to have a chance up for that on each round that the enemy gets to go, which is nice. Let's see, we're almost through this first wave. Looks like we'll be coming through right around the one minute mark to get through there. And we don't really have anyone built for damage in here, keep that in mind. Our Sill is built high resistance, high accuracy. She doesn't really have any crit rate or crit damage to speak of. Neither does Tayrell. Obviously, Frozen Banshee's not here to wipe out waves. And Sepulcher is just a single target hitter. So, um, we're not going to be seeing amazing times on these, but they'll be pretty decent coming through here and very consistent, which is what really matters for a player coming up in the world. You know, you're coming up and you've got a decreased defense champion, you've got Sill from your login rewards, and you've got. Uh, a couple rares, the Frozen Banshee and uh, Apothecary. You pulled your uh, Sepulchre Sentinel and you're just thinking, all right, what can I do to get through here? Because once you get through Dragon 20, that's kind of the gateway in order to open up the rest of the game. So you can farm five and six star gear very consistently here and uh, some of the best sets as well with lifesteal and speed. So this is really the goal for an up-and-coming player is to get through this dungeon and be able to farm it consistently so that you can get the gear to go on to the harder dungeons and uh, be able to progress to your Arbiter. So we're going to be coming through this wave here right about the 2 minute 15 second mark. We are on to the boss. Now this is going to go pretty quickly because of Frozen Banshee, but we'll see here if Sepulchre can get up her block debuffs. Actually, we may go ahead and run out of those before the dragon actually gets a chance to put on his debuffs, which would be uh, unfortunate. But hopefully we'll get a chance throughout the fight to see the effectiveness here. Yeah, these are going to run off for us. 
So hopefully by the time we get around to the next attack from the dragon, we'll have the block debuffs up. And this is what happens when your team runs so much faster, is that buffs actually tend to fall off in between the enemy's attacks. So, uh, I mean, it's a good problem to have. If you're moving that fast, you're probably going to win anyways. But we'll see here if we can get some use out of it. There we go. So we blocked a couple debuffs there from our Tayrell and from our Sepulcher. So only our Apothecary and our Frozen Banshee ended up taking it. Still has high resist, so she's not going to get hit by the debuffs usually anyways. But here we go. We're going to be coming up on, it looks like, about a 3 minute and 30 second run here, which is not bad at all for a team like this. And we will be moving on to the Spider next. There we go. See anything good here? No, sir. Uh, I need to grab some energy real quick, so let's back up to here and grab this. All right. So let's go on to the spider, and we will go to stage 20. And so Sepulcher actually makes a pretty good spider tank. Uh, she does block debuffs. She does increase defense. She's got a defense aura. She's red, so the spiderlings will come in on her. Now, I do not have her in the best setup for this role. Uh, she is not in lifesteal because, like I said, my Machalette handles that in clan boss. So uh, she will go down for sure here. Um, but basically this setup I have, uh, we're going to be doing the HP burns. We're going to be seeing Cold Heart come in here with her big hits. And Gorgrab can fill in Apothic or uh, what's her name, Arbiter's spot as well. But I don't have him set up at the moment, so we're going to be bringing in Arbiter. But I have shown it with Gorgrab before. But anyways, let's get in here and just see how we do. So we're going to come in. And we'll see here, she's going to put up her uh, block debuffs and increase defense right away. So there we go. We get our decreased defense up and our HP burns. Now all of the spiderlings are going to start coming in on her. But since we have the block debuffs and increased defense, they're not doing a ton on their hits. If she had lifesteal, she would have healed back up there. Uh, but she does not. So there we go. We get the heart seeker off. We're moving through the spider's HP pretty good. So, I mean, obviously this is a very good setup. Not everyone coming up through Spider 20 is going to have Ultimate Gallic and either Gorgorab or Arbiter or uh, Stagnite, Cold Heart, all that kind of stuff. You know, there's plenty of different options in here. You can bring in Armagers and such, but uh, I've been doing a lot of regearing lately, so I'm just showing off what I know will work based on the champions that I currently have geared. So as you can see, she's taking quite a pounding so far. She's definitely going to be going down right here as soon as she gets a turn. But we're most of the way through the spider already at this point. So all that we need now is for either Ultimate Gallic or Cold Heart to finish her off. Which uh, hopefully will be coming around right here with Ult Gallic. We get the revive, so Sepulchre's back to take the hits. And we get the HP burns off, so Spider's going down right here. And that is going to be the end of it. So as you can see, uh, that's another way to come in here and do it without miscreated monster. You just need someone like her that can, that can come in and tank up those hits for a couple of rounds in order to get your damage off. So a minute 26, not a bad time at all. And let's move on to the main event, which is going to be a clan boss run. So uh, unfortunately, Nightmare has gone green, which is not good for us. Maybe I'll do an Ultra Nightmare run here and uh, just see how it goes. I'm not sure if her, actually yeah, her accuracy is high enough, so we should be okay. Uh, let's go ahead and jump in here. Get rid of my unkillable team. So we're not gonna see the highest hits that I do uh, with this, but should be pretty decent amounts here. Probably a little less than a four key though. Uh, let's see, we'll get in Masha Led. Actually, I want him towards the back of the lineup. Who else do we want to bring in? Um, let's see, we're already going by rank. We want Arbiter in, we want Masha Led in for sure, we want Rotos, and who's going to be our last person here? Frozen Banshee for some poisons. Alright, so that's going to be our setup. We're coming in with her as our decreased attack, Rotos as our decreased defense, Arbiter and Masha Led for speed, and Leech from Masha Led as well, and then Frozen Banshee for our poisons. So let's just jump into it here, and we're going to go ahead and let it run on auto. We'll see here, she's going to get up her uh, increased defense and block debuffs right away, which on a counterattack setup is not what you want her to do. 
So the optimal thing if you're running her in a 4-3 setup for counter attack is to go ahead and manual at the beginning and get her to a point where you want her to put on that block debuffs to stop the stun and then you can uh, get that rolling properly on rotation. So anyways, we're gonna go ahead and uh, let this run here and then we will come back in at the end of the fight and just see how we're doing. All right, so we're probably coming up close to the end of the fight here. Uh, it really just depends on if Sepulcher is able to get her decreased attack back on here before, there we go. So she's got it continuing. We're taking pretty big hits now. As you can see, we're doing close to a million damage per turn. The only issue with this team is that they don't last that many turns because they are a little bit squishier than a normal team you'd be bringing in here. But it looks like we should be seeing right about four key numbers. She doesn't manage to block the damage there from or the stun, which is unfortunate. Let's see, can we get her back around? Yes, we can. She gets up that block debuffs. Arbiter heals her up a bit. So we're going to be seeing a pretty decent hit here overall. Um, hopefully over 20 million, that'd be pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so I mean, this is Sepulcher. She comes in, she does a lot of work here. Uh, we'll see if we can see some more zeros coming out from her passive. Uh, we got a zero on Arbiter right there, so she's completely fine to come back in and revive our Masha Ledge. So Sepulcher can really keep you going with some of those clutch passive procs. And uh, I mean, outside of an unkillable, this is probably one of the best runs I've gotten on Ultra Nightmare. So she is definitely capable of coming in there and uh, fixing up your team a little bit. Let's get some decreased attack on here, hopefully. No, if we get the block debuffs and increased defense instead. But that helps her to survive, so we're looking good. Hopefully we can get the decreased attack coming up right here. Ooh, we do not. So that's going to be the end of the run. We're going to be seeing about uh, 22.5 million, which overall not too bad. We did see another proc from her uh, passive coming off and saving our Arbiter. If Arbiter can get back around, yeah, she didn't have her uh, revive, unfortunately, though. So that's going to be the end of it. 23 million, pretty good. That is really close to a three key right there. So Sepulcher coming in doing a lot. She did about 2 million damage there, which isn't crazy, but she allowed us to survive a lot longer, which helps Rotos and Frozen Banshee get in there and do some more damage as well, as well as Masha Led. He is the least tanky person in here. So her allowing us to survive longer allows him to get more work off. And then as he gets those leeches off, he helps everyone else survive. So it's all about synergy here. And she is definitely coming in and making it happen better than Jareg was for me. So that is good to know. But that's going to be it for the Sepulcher Sentinel Champion Guide, guys. Uh, if you think that I missed anything with her, like uh, if you think she's great in Arena or the Fire Knight, let me know. But those are where I think she's good in the game right now. Let's take one last look at her before we get off. There we go. So pretty cool build. Her hair's uh, interesting, kind of looks like ramen, but uh, overall pretty cool design. So uh, make sure to subscribe if you have not already. Leave a comment down below or join the Discord if you have anything you'd like to talk about. I'm always happy to help you guys out and thanks for watching.